what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video here at Red Dirt Reptiles. For those of y'all just joining us, I'm Corey Samples. And for those of y'all returning, let's get right into it. Hey, what's up? So in this video, we're gonna cover enclosures. Now, on my last one for about spiny tails, you guys asked to see my enclosures. So uh, let's go ahead and Spirit's just gonna chill here for me for just a second. She won't come off of that table. Well, let's turn a look at this way. This is my spiny tails enclosure. I'll just give y'all a quick overlook of that real quick. So you can see there he is up in the corner. This is about the smallest I would go for the spiny tails as far as adults go. Again, uh, when I have just a little bit more room, he will get a bigger enclosure himself. Uh, all right, so back to spirit. Okay, so again, we're gonna cover enclosures. And since y'all been asking to see my enclosure, instead of shooting uh, this video in my master bath where I have a little better lighting and such, I decided to come and shoot it out here in the reptile room. Uh, where I've got all my enclosures or not all of them, but a significant amount of them including spirits uh, So I thought I would start off with showing you uh, her because I want y'all to see this She's gonna go back into this enclosure uh, And then you'll get to kind of see some of the other things that we have painted around in here If you can't see behind me, uh, I have an enclosure that is a four by two by six uh, I currently have a young juvenile Sulawesi water monitor inside of there uh, Big enclosures are great However, uh, just enough room is, is best for training. Uh, and this is just enough room for a young, young yearling. Uh, it's not too much where he can go hide all the time. He's gotta stand here and confront the fact that I'm there and that makes it amazing. Uh, by the time they get to this age, you can put them in a big enclosure like what you're fitting to see her go into. Uh, and, and like uh, most of my animals, I can just reach right in and get her right out. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's what I did for this video to be completely honest with you. So y'all will get to see that. Uh, you have to excuse if you see some dogs in this video or my dogs are out. They do run through the entire facility or household, I should say. Uh, and most of my animals get along with my dogs. My dogs don't really bother them. I, I pay attention to most of this. Uh, Spear here, if you've ever seen uh, Eric Thompson's Facebook, again, shout out to him who said it before. Uh, she grew up uh, around dogs, so she is unfazed by any of them. So that's awesome because we do the exact same thing here at Red Dirt Reptiles. Most of our animals are unfazed and that makes for an amazing uh, interaction as far as keeping your animals in and around. Uh, now I'm not saying that's the best thing to do and I'm saying if you are going to introduce a uh, lizard to dog or cat, please be very careful and be watching what you do because it could very well go bad. Uh, as a matter of fact, to be completely honest with you, I have a new addition to my house, a rescue that we took in. It's a pit bull, a uh, female pit bull, and she's not quite used to my lizards. Uh, so if we have an escapee, which we have, she tends to try and chase them down. Uh, so if you see me rush her off, I apologize. That's the one animal I'm not necessarily worried about, but, but nervous about. I just don't want anything bad to happen or there to be a bad interaction. Uh, so yeah, let's jump to it. Let's cover her enclosure. So for this specific girl, this specific size, uh, nothing less than an eight foot long by four foot deep by four foot tall enclosure. As a matter of fact, that's what she stays in right now. That's what she thrives in currently. Uh, I have two of those. I have two eight by four by four stacked on top of each other and you'll get to see those here in a minute. Uh, she stays in the bottom one and so you get to see one of my other Philippines in the video too, but eventually we will cover him in a different video. Uh, anyway, so Starting these guys off, I mean, you can start them in something small. Uh, baby, baby, I would start something like this where I've got one of my top enders. This is a large low. Um, that's for baby, baby. And I'm talking like be, be ready to start upgrading enclosures quickly. If you're feeding these guys correctly and you've got proper husbandry skills and techniques involved, then they're going to grow like weeds. Quick, 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 quick. I always say, uh, and have even been told when I first got into this, when you buy your first monitor, you better have a couple cages set up and be ready to start building your, your uh, forever enclosure for that animal. Because by the time you finish it, if you start the enclosure relatively at the same time uh, you got the animal, then by the time you finish it, your animal will be, be ready to go in it. it they, they grow that fast. Uh, and that by no means means take your time doing it. I'm talking like within a year or two, these guys can be a size where they need to be in something large. Uh, Spirit here is, doesn't absolutely have to have an upgrade, but she probably will get an upgrade here soon. Uh, I might even put her in an eight by four by six by herself just so she's got some ample amount of room. Uh, anyway, uh, let, let's cover husbandry just for a moment. Uh, 
everybody out here has a different method to use. Uh, and realistically, I don't think anybody's really wrong and I don't think anybody's really right as long as you have a thriving animal. Again, I covered this in my last video. If your animal is thriving, nobody can tell you that you're doing something wrong because obviously you're doing something right. Maybe we shouldn't be listening to the people who scream bad husbandry but can't keep an animal alive for more than a couple of months. Uh, instead, why don't you look to somebody who has done this for years upon years and go do some research into what their natural terrain is and what it might take for you in your home area to take care of such an animal like this. I can tell you that out in the natural, out in the wild, these guys do not have the same, uh, same husbandry that I have here in my house, but I have something close that mimics good husbandry for them that, that keeps the correct heat and humidity, okay? I use a cypress mulch top sand and top soil mixture. Uh, it holds and burrows excellent, although she doesn't burrow. She will go hide behind something, but she does not burrow. Uh, and every morning, I'm, I'm always blessed to be waking up to her at about 7 in the morning, getting up on her log, ready to bath for the day, uh, just enjoying life. All right, spirit, come on back down here, baby. All right. So, you can't see. I mean, she's super social butterfly. I mean, again, uh, let's say... In my enclosure for her currently right now, I'm running two 150 watt bulbs for basking. I run a full spectrum UVA, UVB bulb uh, that mimics daytime lighting. And then I run a ceramic heat emitter at night for nighttime heat. Uh, I don't want it at night to get any lower than about 76 to 78. Uh, that's about the lowest you'll really find out in, here, in the wild for them. Um, during the day, I want to keep a good gradient of about 88 to 90 degrees, but I want their basking spot to be sitting somewhere around 130 to 140. Uh, honestly, right now with it being winter, I've chilled things off a little bit. I've taken uh, one of her bulbs out. I usually run three, but with it, cool, with it cooling down, I've taken one out, so she's gone down to two 150 watt basking bulbs. Um, and I keep her basking spot somewhere around 120 right now. So that's just me trying to uh, subsidized for season changing where she would be just as well uh, even though it doesn't change much it does change some and so I'm trying to keep that same cycle excuse me keep that same cycle for them because they seem to, to thrive well on that uh, and so yeah so I tell you what what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I'm going to pick her up and I'm gonna put her back in the enclosure and let y'all see what I'm talking about go out of here see get out of here go go see what I'm talking about my dogs I'm sorry no no get out of here uh, Anyway, I'm going to pick her up and put her back in her enclosure and we'll kind of explain some things that we got going on in there and why I do such things uh, and how things are. And uh, yeah, if y'all have any comments or questions or anything like that after y'all see this, then feel free to ask. Uh, keep in mind that I'm always changing things up around here. Um, you know, these enclosures aren't permanent that you would like to think they are, right? But I think all of us as red top keepers, uh, when we have big animals like this, we build something and then we think about something else and so we end up building something else uh, until we get to what we want. Uh, and I want something super sizable for her, so that would be great. Hey, back up please, thank you. See, my dogs are just excited to see what this is. All right, so uh, I tell you what, keep your eyes on her for just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and throw these guys outside. Uh, yay, please, how are you? Outside, go, go outside, go outside. Alright, sorry about that. So, just to make this easier because my dogs are going to get in my way. Not that they're going to hurt her, she's going to hurt them, but they're just going to get in my way and I don't want to be dealing with that while trying to shoot a video over y'all. So, let's pick her up. Come here, pretty girl. Let's get you. Okay, hi, baby. You can give me some hugs before we go back in, huh? Uh, Alright, so, hey, no throwing the ball right now, okay? Daddy's trying to play a video, please, okay? So, if you can't tell, this is what I was talking about. These are eight foot by four foot by four foot twin stack enclosures. Uh, both of them have water features. Both of them have tons of driftwood. Both of them are set up pretty much the same way as far as lighting and heating goes. Uh, this one down here, so this is the one that we'll focus in on since we're covering uh, Spirit today. Spirit's enclosure, she's got, like I said, the cypress mulch top, top soil and play sand mix as far as substrate. She's got a six foot by two foot by one foot water feature. She has a two and a half foot by two foot by two foot tub that I use for a nesting box that I have a ton 
of different things in to provide for her. Uh, I, and, and I'll cover nesting boxes on a different video for females and why you should have them and why they are necessary for proper reproduction and proper longevity of your, your females. Uh, anyway, so if you can't tell, she went right in pretty well. So as far as adults go, once they get to about this size, you know, I've done a ton of research. I've asked a ton of questions. I've had a lot of people uh, comment back and kind of give me some feedback. And I've talked to some of the top breeders and keepers around the globe when it comes to Asian water monitors, water monitors in general, monitors in general. And they all tell me uh, the exact same thing that I've been experiencing for the last year and a half, two years, is that as an adult, once I find some driftwood, if I just spray it clean, let it dry fully, I can go ahead and throw it in there. If there's any type of bugs or anything like that, my animals have built up such a solid immune system that I don't have to worry about that, which is why she thrives impeccably and so does he. Uh, here we have enclosures from all different sizes uh, and their humidity levels range from all different sizes. The only reason to be, I'm going to be completely honest with you, okay? The only reason that my windows right now are 100% clear is because right before this video, I decided to come clean the living tar out of them so that y'all could see these, okay? Unfortunately for me, is this specific setup, these, these windows don't stay clear because uh, I keep high heat and high humidity in there. So what does that mean? Uh, just like at a house, if you've got it cold inside and it's hot and humid outside, you have a ton of dew. Uh, or wetness on the windows, that's what I'm experiencing all the time. I usually, especially on the two sides where my large bodies of water are, I usually have water that will rain down this side because of the heat steaming off my water and causing the humidity, which is great because these guys need to be in top humidity. So for these guys, again, I explain heat uh, no lower than 76 to 78, an extreme gradient of about 88 to 90 with a basking spot of about 140 to 150. Uh, in my opinion, if you're doing your, your setup right and your house is at the correct temperature, which is about 72 to 74 on average, uh, keeping these guys at about 120 for about four months as on their basking spot is not a bad idea. Uh, my female's been healthy, cycled healthy, and has grown healthy uh, in doing so. Uh, and all my animals thrive just doing the same. We, we kind of cool it off just a little bit in the winter times uh, during those seasons, and then we ramp it back up come spring. Uh, and, and watch our animals just love life again even more. Uh, so these guys though, unfortunately, have to stay in super high humidity. Now most people say I'm keeping them at 40 to 50% humidity is about all they can achieve. And uh, guys, I said this in my spiny tail video, and I'll say it again, if you need more humidity, larger body of water. I told you all that I use extremely decent large size bodies of water. And if you can't tell, this is an extremely large size body of water inside this enclosure. And that mixed with all my heat and everything along with my substrate that holds moisture and puts it off in the air and there not being a ridiculous amount of venting. Remember these are monitors and it's not stagnant air because of the fact that there are creases and holes and vents. Uh, but remember, you want to create a lot of humidity. These guys honestly would thrive if they're staying somewhere at 70% and above. So my guy is usually sitting at about 73 to 76% humidity is what my gauges are reading. Uh, every now and then when I don't new substrate in every six months or so, if I go back and do a whole new substrate review, all new fresh water and everything, my, my, my humidity may stay in the upper 80s for a couple of weeks until it starts to dry out a little bit. Uh, but then it mellows back down into the 70s and we're all good. Sorry. <laughs> my... My buddy over here is really wanting to come out and say hi. This is Galaxy. Uh, Galaxy's a new chalice monitor, and we will eventually cover him uh, because this guy right here is one, if not uh, the absolute favorite here at Red Dirt Reptiles facility. We absolutely love him uh, and adore him. So anyway, uh, he, his setup, and I'll just cover this real quick because his setup is the exact same as hers. So you can kind of see up here what my lighting setup is like. It is built. With the lights set up the exact same underneath here, it's just up underneath where you can't see it, but at least zooming in up here, you can see. You can see I have a ceramic heat emitter for nighttime heat. That's a 100 watt bulb right there. Uh, I hate the 100 whites. I usually do the 100 blanks, but I couldn't find any today or the other day, so I ended up going with the 100 white just because to me, I think the 100 blacks get uh, radiate a little more heat a little better. Uh, I've got a UV bar that I took out because my light went out and I've got to go replace it. Now, while these guys do not need UVB, I like to run UVB. It brightens up my enclosure, makes it stand out a lot more. And to be honest with you, I think it, it makes them a lot more active. 
Uh, and then over here, I've in his enclosure, I haven't taken it out yet because this just happened with her. Uh, but these are the 350 watt basking bulbs that I was talking about using. Uh, these go off and on on a timer sometimes. <laughs> right now, I do not have everything hooked up to a timer. Right now, my ceramic heat emitters in both enclosures are hooked up to a timer. So those kick on at about 9 o'clock at night. So at about 8.30, which uh, be here in a little while, I'll go ahead and hit both of these buttons. I'll just do this one real quick on Galaxy so you can see. I've got both of these on a remote system set up so you can see this is on and off. And so we'll go and turn his off. Now, that's just killing just my basking bulbs for now. Now, so if this is to go off during my day, then I would be really screwed, you know? So it's great that I have a camera system set up in here and remote access to all my things where I can come back in and, uh, you know, technology's made things great where I can do all this over the phone through an application. So it's beautiful. Uh, and, and I've got, like I said, a camera in here and then cameras in both of these enclosures right up here in these top right corners that tell me everything I need to know. So at nine o'clock, 8.30 to nine o'clock, when I kill these lights, that thing jumps on and we create the most lovely environment for him in the afternoon. Uh, honestly, that actually, I say nine, it doesn't kick off till 10 because I let this cool down for a little bit and drop some of the heat off before it kicks on. So I'm gonna click this back on real quick just so we can get off in there. Uh, if you can't tell what I've got hanging on his back wall and it is a little off right now just because of the fact that he has jumped all over the place, that is a temperature sensor. I use wireless weather stations here at the facility uh, in all my enclosures to constantly be telling me the heat and humidity of my enclosures. Uh, while it's cool to have the one that's got the little micro probe that goes in uh, and, and, and really sits in, I think those are probably a little more fine tuned uh, to proper heat and proper humidity just because they're sitting directly where you want it to be. Where I've got this as a medium gradient. Uh, but what I do think is best about these is that they're wireless and so, with having this one, I'm not just running one uh, one enclosure off of one setup. Uh, actually, I've got two or three different screens standing behind me, and each one of them uh, shows three to four different sensors and reads all their readouts for me, and I can cycle through them on a regular basis, and they're also technology-based and Wi-Fi enabled, so it, again, just makes it a little bit, uh, little bit better. TP-Link is really gone. Not that I, uh, they endorse me or anything like that, but TP Link video uh, recordings and uh, Orion Weather Stations have really, really kicked it off for me here at the facility. So uh, yeah, anyway, so that's, that's as far as, as uh, lightings go. Now, if you can't tell, I use a ton of driftwood. I like a, a good amount of driftwood in there. Uh, I don't have the, the walls climbable um, because most Asian water monitors will stay more terrestrial than they will arboreal, meaning they don't want to use the walls. Uh, his was set up mainly for an Asian water monitor, but he ended up inside of it instead. And so he just gets the uh, non-luxuriousness of having climbable walls at the moment because he will go into a much bigger enclosure. And, or I will cut this one out and redo it and make it all his and his partner Nebulous. Uh, Again, when we cover uh, the new Chalice monitor on our, on our series, uh, I will be showing both enclosures. Uh, she is in a much smaller enclosure for breeding purposes, so it makes it a little different, uh, but relatively all the same. Uh, all my heats, all my humidity is all the same. So I built this with yellow pine, uh, treated yellow pine, sorry, non-treated yellow pine, but it has all been sealed. And then on the inside, I dry locked it. Now look, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go ahead and be 100% honest with you. I've got two enclosures that I built like this that I dry locked the inside of, and I absolutely regret it, okay? People say dry lock works great, and while it does relatively work good if you're sealing everything in the process of dry locking everything, and I mean sealing, I mean caulking all your edges and stuff like that so you have no leaks. While that is great, I have still noticed molding in certain spots. And I have realized that it stays extremely dirty. Even though I clean the glass, I may clean the outside, the walls in here stay extremely dirty. And there's really, mine is spraying it down and super soaking my enclosure, which I don't want to have to do. Um, you know, taking a pressure washer to it. Uh, it is not going to come clean. It's always going to be stained. And I absolutely hate that. And so... What I realistically should have done, and so from future reference, I will continue to do so, is I should have either polywalled this thing, 
uh, which if you don't know what that is, I'll cover that in a different video. Uh, if you want to look up in between time, look up Lowe's or Home Depot, look up four by eight sheet of poly wall and, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's pretty much thin plastic. Uh, I will either poly wall it or I will two part epoxy this stuff. I should have pond armor, pond sealed this thing in the beginning. Uh, the only reason I didn't is holy cow, to be completely honest with you, it's very pricey. Uh, you're talking anywhere from 60 to 80 bucks for a quart and a half and that really starts to add up when you think something like this usually is going to take somewhere about a gallon altogether, uh, if not a gallon and a half. Um, I can tell you that with the dry lock, although cheaper, I did run through about six gallons through between the both of these. Um, the same thing with the other enclosure that has uh, the dry lock in it as well. Again, it is working. And because I properly did it, because I layered it correctly and took my time to aerate and took my time to seal, uh, it's, it's relatively working how it was supposed to. Um, but people were right in my, in my research, you know. Uh, I wanted to say that maybe I could do it better. And so I tried a couple different alternatives like pre-sealing the wood before I actually put the dry lock on it uh, and it didn't didn't do anything better there are still some mold spots still some wet spots that you're going to deal with so again if you're going to do this uh learn from me learn from everybody else that'll tell you differently it's worth investing a little bit more money into like the epoxies uh because it'll last you just a ton longer on top of that you can spray it down with a water hose or you can spray it down uh with like wipe out you know our reptile wipe out cleaner spray it down and just wipe it right off it's lovely it's like it's like wiping on glass uh, and you will eventually get to see that in one of mine. Uh, as a matter of fact, you saw it just a little bit when I opened Jab's enclosure at the beginning of this video. Shout out to Jabberwock because his enclosure is uh, ocean blue, ocean baby blue, pond shield pond armor. Uh, or the sky blue, I guess is what they call it now. Uh, and then I've got a young Asian water monitor enclosure that is sitting in another room that we will eventually get to in another video. Heck yeah. Uh, and it is all black pond armor, pond shield, pond epoxy on the inside. You're going to absolutely love the way these things look. They turned out amazing. Uh, so, that being said, guys, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Uh, if there's anything else maybe that we could cover, if you want to know anything else, uh, keep in mind that I'm, I understand that you're going to ask, so let's see the 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 other Asian water monitor enclosures that you've got, and we will get to those, I promise. I just wanted for somebody to see that, uh, you know, my bathroom wasn't what the enclosures were that these are putting off in, and, uh, you know, somebody was asking to see my enclosures in person. Um, I don't live in an area where I can have ginormous outdoor enclosures right at the moment, and I will eventually get there one day. Uh, but instead, I got a lot of these inside, uh, and then just a few maybe outdoor small things that, you know, are good for enrichment, but nothing for full-time purposes. Uh, but yeah, for that matter, stay tuned, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. I appreciate y'all taking in. Hey, thanks for sticking with me through another video here at Red Dirt Reptiles. If y'all like what y'all are seeing, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Let me know I'm doing good, and I'll continue to put out awesome videos for y'all. Hope to see you around on the next one. Thanks again.